Now the next segment, we are going to look at the relationship between market share and sales. Now, a lot of people will say that I can increase my sales and that will increase my market share. Well, that's technically true. If you increase your sales, your market share will definitely increase by a lot. But also there will be some instance whereby you don't do anything and that can inflate or deflate your market share depending of the other competitors is doing. What do I mean by that? Okay, so I'm just going to go through some examples on how market share and sales are affected, not only for your own, but also, let's say, for your competitors. So I'm just going to give you a hypothetical example. So say that in the market that you are competing with, you have three brands. So you have, so brand one, that's you, and brand two, and brand three. And let's just for simplicity, I'm just going to use the unit sales as, let's say you have six unit sales, two unit sales, and four unit sales. So the market share at the moment, so I'm just going to call it market share. It will be, for you, it will be six out of the total. So in this case, the total is six plus two plus four, that's 12. So six out of 12, that's about 50%. For brand two, so I'm just calling it brand one. Brand two, that will be two out of 12. That will be one out of six. That's about 16.7%. And for brand three, the market share will be four out of 12. That's about 33.3%. So again, your market share will get you 100%. Now say that, so let's say brand two has been out of the market. So for some reasons, brand two are not serving the market. So, but brand one and brand three are continue to serve the same amount. So say that brand one, brand two, and brand three, unit sales. Now brand one still maintaining six sales, Brand two, because it's out, so sell, selling no more, so that's zero. Brand three will still keep four, so that's 10. So your new market share now, for brand one, which is your brand, it's six out of 10 instead of 12. So by selling the same, you are actually penetrating a bit more. Brand three becomes four out of 10 also increases to 40%. So because of that, I think it's showing you, so if your sales volume is unchanged, as what we did just now, in a declining market, well, it is a declining market because the fact that now, brand two, it's basically serving zero. So your market share actually increases. If, for example, brand two and brand three did better than it, in such a way that they increase sales more than you, then if you have a constant sales, then your market share will fall. So that's what this graph is actually mean. So the idea is do not get too complacent with what you have because your competitors can do better than you. And in fact, they will do better than you in one stage. So the next one is that we're going to go through some of the measurement for brand relative position in a category. So there are different matrix that we can embark. So the first one, it will be the relative market share. So as the word relative here, so it's still the same calculation, but in terms of the relative means that you are basing it based on the largest competitors. So let's say the largest competitors in computers, let's say Windows are taking 95% and let's say you are a small brand of just 1%. So this is your brand and this is the largest, I would say, competitors. So your relative market share will be one divided by 95, which is very small. So Compared to the biggest market share, you are the minute one, which is dangerous, right? 
So why relative market share is important is because it benchmark your performance against your current leading competitors. So who are your leading competitors and you'll be able to detect that and how are you positioned against them? And also it enables comparison across product categories. So you can see how like a market in automotive industry as versus to operating system that we are going to look next are going to be a bit different. And lastly, it used in what we call the BCG matrix. So the BCG matrix is something that you can see on this picture. So BCG matrix is a framework by Boston Consulting Group to evaluate a strategic position of business portfolio and potential. So they are doing it in terms of two different aspects. So the first aspect is the relative market share, which is to assess your, well, they call it cash generation in here, but I'll call it the industry competitive position. Competitive position. And the second one is the market growth rate that will be the attractiveness, I would say. If your business is com attractive at the same time, it is also your position as earning you a lot of cash, that will be the star, which is what you probably want. Or it could be a cash cow whereby the market growth rate are low, so low attractiveness, but it's very high industry competitiveness. So you're just milking the cash cow, that's what they say. Lastly, we're gonna look at measurement for competitive industry. So the first one, it could be the firm concentration ratio. So it's pretty straightforward in here, whereby it is the sum of the market share of the top three or four firms in the market. So it depends on how you define your firm concentration ratio. You can take three or you can take four. So the last one, which is the Herfindel index, which is sum of the squared of MS across all brands. So if you look at here, the top three in terms of operating systems are this one, Windows XP. Now I know this is pretty long time ago, but let's just use that for calculation example. So let's take a look at this. So Windows, Windows Vista, and Mac are basically the three giant that competing or the top three or four firms that are competing in the operating system industry. So if we take a look at their percentages, now I don't know whether you can see it, it's pretty small. So you look at your lecture slide. XP, it's rating at 79.41%. Vista, is 9.19% and lastly Mac is at 7%. So if I'm gonna take my calculator and calculate this, the total here will give me 95.6%. So the sum of these three are the sum of these three. So what can you say from here? So you can see from here that the market are very, very concentrated because three of the biggest firm is acquiring 95% of the share. And the last 5%, it will be by those, what we call others. And that's pretty worrying because the fact that uh, if I'm gonna compete in here, I'll be, I'll be competing with these three giants, which already have 95% of the share. So that could be, so you really want to think about where do you want to enter? How do you make it actually competitive and so on? And also the Herfindel index is also a measure of concentration. So if your Herfindel index is equals to one, so this is what we call a monopoly. So if you remember in your microeconomics one, a monopoly is someone that's operating by themselves. So they're taking 100% of the market share. So that's HFI of one. So as the HFI is closer to one, it indicates that the degree of the concentration is very high. So if you think about telecommunication industry, it is a more concentrated firms 
as compared to an industry of say food and beverages. You can see that there are many restaurants lying around Caulfield or Clayton, but if you take a look at telecommunication industry, you probably can name only a few. Why? Because there are what we call an oligopoly, which is a more concentrated than a restaurant business. Uh, anyone can basically open. So if you think about waters, they normally only have one state-owned water company. So because of that, they are a monopoly that has the HFI of equals to one. So in here, HFI is 0 0.654. It's basically quite concentrated, not overly concentrated, but it's already con concentrated enough. Now, if you look at the auto manufacturer market share, now, as you can see that the pie here are more evenly spread as compared to the operating systems. So in here, we can see that the concentration ratio has dropped to 46%. And your HFI, it's actually at a very low of 0 0.1. They are spread across, or you can see that the HFI and the concentration ratio goes down as compared to a very concentrated market like the operating system. So that's all for the measurement for competitive in intensity. So what we have done here is firstly, we take a look at market share in terms of the relative price index, where we calculate what is the relative price index, which is the average price paid divided by the weighted average price paid, or the revenue market share divided by the unit market share. And then we look at the share versus sales. So what's the difference if you do nothing? And let's say your competitors are changing the space for you. So it might be beneficial for you or it might not be beneficial for you. And lastly, we look at the competitive intensity where we looked at the Herfindel index and also the concentration firm in such a way that if you're more concentrated like the OS industry right here, then your HFI and your CR are going to be high numbers. And if you are evenly spread, not so evenly spread, but there are more players in the market that takes a market share like this, then obviously your concentration ratio and HFI or Herfindel index is declining. So in the next video, we're going to look at how are we going to calculate market share. So stay tuned.